Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. Lead us, our gracious Heavenly Father, as we open thy word to study today, direct us, and may this be the day that someone will be born into the family of God. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Now, this is Christmas Eve day, and as I've said before, some of you are listening at 4.30 in the morning, some near midnight. So whatever time it is, wherever you are, may God bless you as we think about Christmas Eve, the night that Jesus was born and wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. Yesterday, we talked about Jesus, the one who is able to supply all conceivable need and all inconceivable. That is, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above anything we think or ask. In other words, it is impossible for us to exhaust his ability to supply physical, spiritual, financial, and I can testify to that, beloved. I can testify to that. I tell you, the past 13 months, the past 13 months, and in the past 13 months, I have preached on four occasions, and that's all, four Sundays, including Friday and Saturday night on two occasions. So that would be three, six, seven, eight times. Eight times I have preached in the pulpit in 13 months, and the Lord has taken care of my personal need. And when I say that, I'm talking about the personal needs of an average man, car payments, house payments, food, and so on. Now, I can testify that God is able to supply spiritual need because he's done that for 36 years in my life, and he is able to supply spiritual food and strength. He has. He is able to heal. He has raised me up from the jaws of death more than one time in the past eight years. And he supplies every need, and he supplies the financial need. Now, David said, I was once a young man, and I'm an old man now. In Psalm 37, 25, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now, I haven't had all that I would like to have had in the past 13 months, I haven't bought everything that I'd like to buy and could have used, but I can certainly say God has abundantly supplied my need. And that's all he promised. My God shall supply all your need. Not what you want, but what you need. And I can testify that he is able to do just that. Now today, he is able to succor. And we find that in Hebrews 2.18. Turn, please. Save, supply, and succor. I'm talking about the ability of Jesus. In Hebrews 2.18, For in that he himself hath suffered, being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. He is able because he was tempted and he overcame. Now, beloved, I won't, I said this yesterday. But I'm repeating, and I'm not repeating to kill time because I don't have any time to kill or waste. I'll never get said all that I want to say about Jesus, and I mean that from my heart. I said this yesterday, and I repeat it. God saves us with a perfect, or shall I say the perfect, salvation. The perfect, nothing lacking. In other words, regardless of what aspect of salvation may be considered, studied, I'll assure you that God saves with a perfect salvation. Now, Jesus came into this world and he did in flesh what it was impossible for God's holy law to do. Now, God's law is holy. God's law is righteous. The law of God is perfect. And there's nothing wrong with the law. There is not one thing wrong with the law, but beloved, no man, no man ever kept God's law until Jesus kept it. Now, here's what I say. There is therefore now no condemnation which are in Christ Jesus, who walked not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 
For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death for what the law could not do. For what the law could not do in, uh, because of the weakness of the flesh. Listen. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Now, he who saves suckers because he did in flesh, he accomplished in flesh what it was impossible for mortal man to accomplish, he did accomplish, and now because of his victory, he is able to succor, he is able to sustain, he is able to deliver, and he will deliver. Listen to 1 Corinthians 10.13. 1 Corinthians 10.13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, every man, all men, regardless. No temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above the earth, that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now there is a definite understandable promise that cannot be broken, shall not be broken, my friend, God cannot, God cannot, God will not go back on his word, and the Bible teaches clearly, there hath no tempta temptation taken you, but such as is common to every man, all men, but God will not permit you to be tempted, above that ye are able, but will with the very temptation, make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now why? Why? That leads me back to our text of Monday. A child is born, a child is given, a son is given. Now listen, this man, I'm reading Hebrews 7.24, Hebrews 7.24, this man, Jesus, because he continueth ever, because he continueth ever, here's the secret, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, that is, because he is everlasting, because he is eternal, because he continueth ever, because his priesthood is unchangeable, he is able also to save to the uttermost all that come to God. Save to the uttermost all that come by him, seeing that he ever liveth, to make intercession intercession for them. Now, I read 1 Peter 3, 18 uh, yesterday, and we read that the just suffered for the unjust that he might bring, that he might bring, B-R-I-N-G, and that's exactly what Jesus does. You remember when the shepherd went out to look for the sheep? There were 99 safely in the fold. They were in the fold safe and sound, but there was one, and the shepherd sought it, and he found it. Then what did he do? He put it on his shoulder and he brought it. Now, this sounds like fatalism, but it isn't. It isn't. No, no. I don't believe in fatalism. I don't believe. I'm not a hyper-Calvinist. No, no. But I believe the Bible. Now, the God who saves us brings us home in the ark of grace, that is, in Christ. In Christ. Colossians 1, uh, 27. Christ in you. Romans 8, 1. No condemnation of them who are in Christ. Colossians 3.3, 3, hid with Christ in God, in God. Sealed, Ephesians 4.30, by the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. Now the, the Savior not only saves us, but he, he supplies our spiritual food and strength and need. And then he supplies our physical food and strength and need. And then he succors us. He delivers us from temptation. All right? He's able to do it. Why? I read Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, a great priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. Yes, Jesus Though he was perfect, he lived in a body of humiliation. He lived in a body that became weary and tired, and he lived in a body 
that became hungry and thirsty. And in that body we read, listen now, we have a high priest that can be touched. And listen what it says about him. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feline furniture, but was in all points, all points. Now, brother, when the Bible says all points, the Bible means exactly what it says, all points. He was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. All points lack as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly under the throne of grace. Now notice the throne of grace. We're saved by grace. Our need is supplied by grace. My grace is sufficient for thee. And we come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time or in time of need. Jesus said to his disciples in John 16, In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Cheer up, I have overcome the world. And in Romans eight thirty seven, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And because he lives, we live. And because he is forever and eternal, we are eternal. We possess now eternal, everlasting life. Glory to God. Because he who saves and supplies also suckers or delivers or makes a way of escape from every temptation that the devil and the forces of hell hurl at us. Now, if Jesus saved us and then left us to fight our own battles and win our own victories, then some of you people who are not saved might have a legitimate reason For saying, Brother Green, I believe God would save me and can save me, but then, after God saved me, I would never be able to live the Christian life. Now, it's not up to you to live it. Now, wait a minute. Wait just a minute. You can no more live the Christian life than you can produce the Christian life in your inner man. Now, That may be a very poor way of stating it, but listen what I'm saying. You cannot live the Christian life. Christ liveth in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27, I quoted it a moment ago. And the Christ in you lives. Here's the verse. Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm alive. Yet not I, but Christ liveth. In me, the life I now live in the flesh, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Now, beloved, he is the author of eternal salvation. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the Savior of the one who supplies, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ, by Christ Jesus. He saves, he's able to save. He supplies, he's able to supply. He suckers, he delivers, because he conquered. I am he that was dead and am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and death. Now listen to me very carefully. On this Christmas Eve, day. What could be more glorious? What could be more glorious than for you who listen now, who are not saved, to be saved? When I say, Brother Green, can I be saved in my home, in my car, in my place of business? You can be saved right now. If you're listening to my voice, regardless of where you are, if you just bow your head and in your own words, talk to God and just tell God that you know that you are lost and that you want Jesus to save you and that you believe that approximately 2,000 years ago, it matters not, approximately 2,000 years ago, a baby was born wrapped in swaddling clothes, laid in a manger, and Joseph named him Jesus, Savior. And you just say, Dear God, on this Christmas Eve, I want this to be my birthday. Spiritually, I want this to be my birthday. And then just say to God, save me. And then say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive my sins. 
put my name in the Lamb's book of life. And I promise you upon the authority of God's infallible word, Jesus said, He that heareth my word believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. The words I speak are spirit and life, Jesus said. So if you'll receive the words that I've given to you in the last few moments, the words of life, the words of Jesus, believe on him, receive him, and trust him, and he'll save you right now, and you'll know it. And I do wish you'd write me a letter and tell me about it and allow me to share your joy. Father, in the name of Jesus, not a babe in a manger, not a lad in the temple, not the man walking up and down the streets of Jerusalem, but Jesus seated at the right hand of the throne of God. I pray that you'll save souls for his sake, honor, and glory. Save every soul that's under conviction now in his precious name. Amen. 